Is it possible that we are just a tiny speck in the vastness of space? The only place in the universe where intelligent life found its way to manifest? Or maybe there is an abundance of intelligent life out there and we just haven't found it yet. Maybe life is inevitable, but is intelligence as we define it inevitable? Not much evidence of it in the fossil record other than us, kind of because we defined it. But these are fascinating questions that require that we relax the bias that we have as being humans on this planet, just to even ask the question. Let's take it as a given that we are intelligent, we're looking for other species with whom we can communicate. Uh, no, we haven't found other life, and we're still not sure how we would. So we've got radio communication technology. The good thing about that, of course, is that it can penetrate obscuring gas and dust in space. So we send out a signal using radio waves or we use radio telescopes to eavesdrop on signals that may be sent our way. But here's an interesting challenge. We surely would have considered ancient Rome a civilization of intelligent people. But had aliens tried to send radio waves to them, no way to receive it, no way to send back, no way to even know what a radio wave is, because the technology had not yet been invented. So our definition of are we alone has to include the fact that they are not only intelligent, but have technology that they can invoke to then send singles across the galaxy. Now, here's my concern. Maybe we there was an attempt to communicate with us before we had radio waves, and they concluded that there's no sign of intelligent life on Earth. How would we know if we had found alien life? It would be interesting to find something that looks like intelligent alien life, but is not actually alive. It could be a space probe or a satellite. We often imagine extraterrestrial life as having a face, because we can't figure out what it would actually look like. But if we were to find intelligent alien life, we might not immediately know what it is. Our guesses until recently were random mixtures of biological forms. An advanced civilization, however, could also be able to engineer machines or digital living forms within the exact same properties as biological forms. If we look at the example of technology on Earth, we see that it took us more than 400,000 years to develop our first electronic computers. We have since developed even more complex computers and technologies. Today's technology is so advanced that no other biological being on Earth could ever understand the engineering behind it. A growing number of scientists believe that the aliens we are looking for are in fact AI. It is quite possible that some civilizations could have transcended biology altogether to become artificial superintelligence. Seth Shostak is a senior astronomer at the SETI Institute. He argues that if we can develop artificial intelligence within a couple of hundred years of inventing radio, any aliens we are likely to hear have very likely gone past that point. In this century, we're probably going to invent our successors. And that's very important because this becomes a time scale argument. And sometime in this century, we'll probably invent strong AI, thinking machines. The facts are you invent radio and then within a few centuries you've replaced yourself as the intellectual dominating entity on your planet. Experts speculate that self-improving computer systems will enhance themselves to the point that results in the collapse of biological life as we know it. According to Ray Kurzweil, revolutions in AI, genetics, nanotechnology and robotics will usher in the beginning of a period called technological singularity, where human life will be irreversibly transformed. According to the most popular vision of the singularity hypothesis, called intelligence explosion, an upgradable intelligent agent will eventually enter a runaway reaction of self-improvement cycles, each new and more intelligent generation appearing more and more rapidly, causing an explosion in intelligence and resulting in a powerful superintelligence that far surpasses all human intelligence. What happens afterwards is anyone's guess. So could this future superintelligence on Earth be among the first to venture into the vast depths of space? 
Many scientists think that other intelligent technology producing species very likely have evolved before us. There might be many other civilizations in our galaxy that have already gone through this transformation and are now well on their way to becoming something even more advanced than we can imagine. But there is also a good chance that some civilizations have destroyed themselves, a scenario that could also happen to us. According to a paper presented at the Astrophysical Journal last year, there could be at least 36 intelligent alien civilizations in our Milky Way galaxy, the closest being 17,000 light years away and most likely hosted by a low mass dwarf star. Because of the vastness of these distances, practical interstellar travel based on known physics would need to occur at a high percentage of the speed of light. Even so, travel times would be millennia or longer, far surpassing our ability to even detect it for the foreseeable future. I lay awake at nights wondering whether simply we as a species are simply too stupid to figure out the universe that we're investigating. And maybe we need some other species 1% smarter than we are for which all the greatest mysteries of the universe, from dark matter, dark energy, the origins of life, and all the frontiers of our thought would be something that they would just self-intuit. I'm jealous of that possibility, because I want to be around for those discoveries. Interstellar travel is a major challenge for any species. To travel between stars requires a high degree of technology, not to mention an extremely long time to accomplish. The closest star besides our Sun is 4.3 light years away. To put this distance into perspective, the fastest outward bound spacecraft yet sent, Voyager 1, has covered 1 600th of a light year in 30 years and is currently moving at 1 18,000th of the speed of light. At this rate, a journey to Proxima Centauri would take 80,000 years. Because of the vast distances between stars and the limitations of our current technology, we are limited to exploring our own solar system. That, however, doesn't stop us from actively searching for signs of intelligent life. ET isn't going to be some sort of soft, squishy, biological being like they always are in the movies. If we find a signal, don't expect it to be a little soft, squishy gray guy with big eyeballs, no hair, and no sense of humor at the other end, because it's very much more likely that it'll be some sort of machine. SETI Institute has been actively searching for signs of intelligent extraterrestrial life for more than half a century. In 1961, astronomer Frank Drake introduced a way to think about the odds. The Drake equation describes the relative numbers of civilizations in our galaxy, and out of all of them, how many are detectable. A complete understanding of space-based transmissions would require that we identify several types of signals, each with its own spectrum, frequency range, and transmission design. On August 15, 1977, the famous Big Ear radio telescope found a strong, intermittent signal lasting for 72 seconds that appeared to come from the constellation Sagittarius. Astronomers thought that it may have been a signal from an intelligent extraterrestrial civilization. The signal became known as the WOW signal because of the two words printed on the computer readout when a human operator happened to be looking at the right part of the readout. The signal was never heard from again. Are there other methods of communication that we should be listening for? At this point, we're best suited to detecting electromagnetic signals like radio transmissions, but it's possible that different civilizations would use other ways of transmitting information. Suppose they figured out a cleverer way to communicate than radio waves and radio telescopes, a way that we have yet to invent, because we've only been at it for 70 years. They would still come back with no signal from us. So it's hubristic to even think that what we invent out of the human mind would be the way they would attempt to communicate with us. Thanks for watching. Did you like this video? Then show your support by subscribing, ringing the bell, and enabling notifications to never miss videos like